First, I want to thank Bob the Science Guy for mirroring my last video. Ranty has a new theory in regard to his sugar water experiments. This is from his live stream called Game Over for the Flatter. My new experiment proved looming. And in the description it says, after conducting a second test and being overly thorough with my setup, I can now confirm that I alone found demonstrable proof of looming. Um, Ranty, you're about a year late. Uh, here's a video from Mike West, refraction explained with lasers and sugar. And he even shows a laser light bending downward. And of course, we know that downward bending light is the cause of looming. I could not get it to sink which is exactly what the GLOBE community told you when you claimed sinking in these two videos. I will reveal all tonight and also be bringing in guest Brandon Toy. Well, Randy has been collaborating with Brandon Toy, but I didn't have to wait because Brandon gave a short demonstration on this video. So this is a side view of Brandon's setup with the camera being outside the tank on the right. And what is nice about it is he has the objects on the inside. He has a castle on the far end. There's a globe that looks like it's in a clear plastic container and then a single dice. Now, instead of pre-mixing the sugar solution, he actually poured white sugar granules all throughout the bottom of the tank. And this is exactly the same way that Mike West did his setup. But take a look at the glass above the water line up here. Why is it so dirty? Is this intentional? I mean, you think he would have cleaned this tank up before he started the experiment. So this is comparing the plain water to the white sugar added. And you can see that the white sugar has uh, colored the bottom of the tank. Um, he has some rulers here in the background. He has this target, which is nice. But again, I don't understand why he didn't clean that glass up because this is already opaque looking and look how bad it is over here. You can also see some sugar granules sprinkled on the outside of the tank, but let's listen to Brandon as he explains the differences between these two tanks. Now we're gonna look at the bottom of these objects. The blue line, is the top of the globe. The green line is the bottom of the castle directly under these side windows. And the orange line is the bottom of this globe. So blue is the top of the globe. Green is the bottom of the castle. Orange is the bottom of the globe. Now I want to add that where the tank bottom meets that glass back panel is also right above this green line. This is very important. We come over here to our sugar line and take a look at these. Blue is the top of the globe. It's pretty much in line. Green is the bottom of the globe. Sorry, bottom of the castle, excuse me, bottom of the castle. So you can see we've got some, what appears to be bottom up obstruction or sinking, whatever you'd like to call it. I call it bottom up obstruction of the bottom of this castle. So here, right above the green line, if you look over here, you'll see that this window is clearly visible down here and also on the right side. Over in this image, you can just see the top of this window or a smaller window. Same over here. So remember where the tank bottom meets the back panel? Well, it has loomed up to here. And since the castle is also sitting on the bottom, it makes sense that the bottom of the castle also loomed up. So what really happened is that that looming caused this section here to compress into a smaller area. And if you remember, Brandon said that you could actually see part of the door in this area too, because it's also been compressed much smaller. And this explains why we sometimes see the sun flatten as it sets and gets close to the horizon. So of course, as the sun is setting, it's the bottom of the sun that first enters that zone close to the horizon where we see a lot of refraction phenomena. And in this case, what is happening is that it is bending the light downward. 
And since this ray of light is now entering the observer's eyes at a higher angle, to the observer, the bottom of the sun appears loomed up, which of course gives the sun that flattened look. On the globe, the orange is the bottom of the globe. You can see that this is pretty much all missing between this green line, which is the bottom of the castle, and the orange line. So we're over here, where the globe took up this space over on this image that has been reduced, and the globe now has a sort of cutoff shape to it. So this is a blow up of those two photographs and take a look over here on the right. We can see that the globe is still curving down underneath on the bottom and you can see that over here on the left. So again, this globe is not cut off. It is just compressed like the bottom of the castle was. Now Brandon did point this out that the top of the globe is slightly loomed above this line. But also look at this landmass on the globe over here on the left, and we can see that it has been loomed up slightly over here on the right. Now in the back, I, I pointed out uh, three different areas on this castle on the left that have also been loomed up. But the looming over here is pretty consistent all the way through, so we don't see that compression. So Brandon, you might want to ask yourself a very simple question. How did the tank bottom rise to obstruct objects that are also sitting on that tank bottom? Not only that, but it did it in two different locations. So here's my diagram of Brandon's setup. So in order to obstruct the globe here, something on the bottom would have had to have rised up in front of that. And in order to obstruct the higher portion on the castle, a second part of that bottom behind the globe would have had to rise up. So that would actually be two separate horizons in two separate locations. This has a little bit more, uh, I drew out some of the color so you can see the castle here. And I tried to draw out the red. As you can see, it appears that the bottom of that castle is completely gone. Same with the um, globe cube. The bottom of that globe cube appears to be completely gone. This is the same photo which I've uh, darkened slightly to bring out a little bit more detail. But again, you can clearly see that this globe is curving under here. And look at this. You can actually see the bottom of the globe block proving that this is looming. There is absolutely nothing obstructing that globe. So we look at B-Ball's images earlier. Who knows, that may be what's happening here. Bottom up obstruction, you can see the same cloudiness. Take a look at this cloudiness. It's not quite as bad in this image, but there's obviously a lot of density between the observer and the objects that we're observing in this picture. Now, now I think I know why he didn't clean the glass in that tank. I mean, we have plenty of photographic evidence of the same phenomena in very clear conditions. Here's one example. Here's another example. I mean, how hard is it to understand that this ship is being hidden because it is beyond the horizon of a curved Earth? Now, in my eyes, this was a much better scientific experiment, except for the dirty glass. But it was mixed with a whole lot of confirmation bias.